Okay, so my daughter is helping me today with our videoing. Um, but what I wanted to do today is requested that um, I do a video on saddling. So I wanted to uh, show you guys as much as I could as far as I know about saddling. Um, this is my mare Surrender here, uh, about 21 years old. She should stand here pretty good for me. But um, I used not too short of a horse on purpose. I want to show you guys that even with a big saddle, when you get the, the idea of it, it's not hard to put on a saddle. But anyway, first thing that you want to do when you're going to saddle is you want to get a brush. I see a lot of people, they don't brush their horses first. I'm not saying you have to groom your horse to the nth degree, but you want to make sure that sweat marks are off, there's anything underneath where that saddle pad is going to go, um, or where the cinch is going to go, any burrs, any um, bug bites, anything like that. You just want to check them out. If for some reason you don't have a brush, you can always use my horseman's brush that I call. I take my lead rope and I can kind of use it as a little curry if I want to, just to kind of rub over top and, and just make sure that there's nothing where the saddle is going to go. Okay. I also, I almost never tie my horse to saddle my horse. If a horse won't stand to be tied, don't tie them to saddle them. You can have a pretty good uh, wreck. If um, they stand really well and you have to tie them because you're somewhere where something might happen, then you can tie them. But don't tie them in order to be able to saddle them. My daughter's getting attacked by bugs back there. <laughs> okay, so they should learn how to ground tie and ground tie just comes from repetition of, of working their feet and getting them good. Now what I use first, I use a Dixie Midnight Pad underneath. This is kind of an interesting little deal. Um, it lets the sweat roll off. These flies are bad today. It lets the sweat roll off kind of nice and you can just rinse this off in between horses. But I'll throw it up there nice and easy. I make sure it's in the middle. Um, what I do on mine is I have two little pieces of ribbon because most of the time I'm a lot shorter than the horses, so I can't see where the center is. So I put little pieces of ribbon in the center, and I just put one on the mane and one in the middle of the butt there. I always put my saddle a little bit further, my pads a little bit further forward uh, than uh, some people do, because it's going to slide back a little bit, so I put it up there to start. Then I use a diamond wool saddle pad. This one has little compartments that I can put little shims in if I need to, depending on different horses, depending on if they have a hollow back somewhere, they're just starting, if they have an injury or something like that. Just to kind of help them, I don't always want to have it in there, but I can. Okay, and I put that up there nice and even, the best I can. Now, when I pick up a saddle, scooch her out of the way for a second. This saddle is about 54 pounds, okay? It's not hard to deal with a saddle. When you grab the cantle, hopefully you have a Cheyenne roll, because those Cheyenne rolls are lifesavers. Grab the Cheyenne roll and you grab up here. Pick this up so it sits on your hip. You should be able to carry it around and just, you know, wave your hand or whatever you want to do over here. I always grab it on the off side where all my riggings are, okay? If you put it up on this side, you only have to go around the horse once if you have a really skitsy horse or something like that. But it's just also then you don't have to throw all this over the horse as well. So if you get your saddle that you can just hold it like this and it's balanced, life is good. Now normally she's not going to want to move because I, I always tell her she's not allowed to move when I'm saddling her. But I'm going to move her here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, a little downhill, but that's all right. Rearrange that. Now, you can see she's tall. I'm not. I'm going to run out of reach, but it's not strength that gets it up here. Okay, I put this hand here, this hand here. I stand at her shoulder, come back here. I swing it up, get it hung up on my phone, <laughs> and just toss it up there nice and easy. Okay, once it's up there, so it's just, you bring it back, and you just swing it on up. Now again, I ran out of reach, and then you just can set it up there the rest of the way. If it's a smaller horse, it just lays across real nice. 
So you don't stand here and heave it up there, okay? It just swings up real nice and easy. Every single horse, every single time, it doesn't matter if it's my horse, a different horse, whatever, I go through this checklist and if you always do it, you won't fail. I'll grab a hold of the D-ring here and then I'll lift up that saddle pad underneath there. I always run my hand underneath the saddle and make sure that uh, the saddle is in the right place. You don't want to have it digging in right behind the shoulder or anything else. Every single time your horse is going to change in their muscles and stuff like that over time. The saddle is going to fit different. Just get in the habit of I'll pick up this D-ring, make sure that saddle pad is up in the gullet there, slide my hand in there, make sure it's good. Okay, and then I'm going to do, again normally I'm not going to turn her around, but for this I will. On this side, make sure every, all the pieces are out, all the leather straps are out, make sure my hobbles are out, my back cinch is out, my front cinch is out, they let it go. And I pick it up, and I push it up in there, and then I run my hand underneath there. Make sure I have plenty of room, okay? Make sure everything's level and balanced. On the back of the horse, I will make sure that my pad, the center of my pad, the center of my under pad, and the center of my saddle are all together. I'll just kind of rock it there and it'll sit into place, okay? I don't want that all cockeyed, okay? Again, make sure everything's good. And again, don't move your horse around this much. This is for the video, <laughs> okay? Back her up. Let me move her back over this direction so Ariana can get a better view. Now, on this offside, When I do a lot of colt starting, and I'll set my saddle up on its horn on the ground when I'm saddling and unsaddling, saddling and unsaddling, if I put it in my truck or whatever, I take my back ties and I run it through my breast collar and through my lariat. Okay, and I'll show you this when I, when I take it off. But this way, if I set it down on its end, everything doesn't fall over. It doesn't all fall forward. So first thing I do is I untie this, okay? Again, make sure everything's in good position. Undo this, and I'll show you how to do that up close when we're done. Lay them down nice and neat, okay? Make sure it's good, lined up. Make sure this is the right size for her. Check that saddle pad again because I was in the, having her move around. Okay, everything's good and nice and neat. Then we go to the other side. Now, you want to have these front feet relatively even when you go to cinch. If this leg is really back or really forward, you can cause all sorts of wrinkles or you can get the cinch in the wrong spot, so I leave it there. This is your lifeline. If anything happens to this latigo, you could get in trouble because it breaks and stuff like that. You want to never have this touch the ground. You'll see people, they'll pull it out, they'll throw it on the ground, they'll walk away, the horse steps on that, whatever else. It, it weakens it. This always stays up. Okay? You have it nice and tied. When you're ready to cinch, you just undo that first part and let it hang there. Okay? Nice and simple. You reach under and grab the cinch. Hold it up there. This goes through there, slides out, and we pull up and down. Up on this, down on this. This goes back through again. If you have a colt, you don't make it tight until you're ready, because that's when they're going to have a problem. She's not a colt. But three times, you want three layers. Again, this is your lifeline. So you have one layer two layer, three layer. It'll help prevent it from slipping, okay? When you want to tighten this up, this hand, this way. The side of my hand facing her and here. 
I'm going to use my body weight, kind of just push down. My left hand is going to grab this outside piece and lift up. And then it's just nice and easy, nice and smooth. If I start pulling on it, I can start pulling that saddle off. Then you get on, the saddle's all crooked. You can upset your horse. You can do all sorts of stuff, okay? So nice and easy. It's already getting tight. But grab here, here. Lift with the left, down with the, down with the right. Okay, pretty simple. Back cinch. Now this drive, oops, might not have it down low enough over there. This drives me nuts. When people put on a back cinch, they'll have it hanging down really far. She goes to flick a fly, she gets that hind foot up in there. If your horse survives, good luck. You want the back cinch to do something or don't have it do anything at all. I also have a cinch hobble. And I like my cinch, my back cinch to kind of go on an angle forward. I don't want it in the soft of their belly. This is helping support the saddle from flipping up and doing different things if you're roping. So you put it on the soft of their belly, it's going to be more irritating. If you put it over where, where you know, the main the rib cage and stuff is, life is good. You want it snug, but you don't have to cut them in two. Okay, nice and easy. This will be longer on the other side, but that's okay. All right, breast collar. Depending on the type of breast collar, depends on how this is going to be. I'm going to undo this. You don't have to walk all over the place. If you saw, other than the fact I had to move her, I dropped everything on one side, and then I could uh, buckle everything on this side. I don't have to go back and forth. I grab a hold of this, pull it over top. It's right there. Snap it in. You want to make sure that this part is up above. People, you'll see they'll have the breast collar way down there, and then it inhibits where the, where the horse is going to be able to go to. Um, or they have it way up high. <laughs> you, know, you just want it where this is freedom of the shoulder. It's going to prevent the saddle from moving and doing other stuff. Your centerpiece here. You want it snug enough, but not so tight that, you know, you're, you're causing rubs. So that'll be good. Again, you want your equipment to do its job. If it's too loose, it's just going to be flopping around and not doing its job, okay? You have the stuff on there for a reason, use it. Now when I cinch, typically I cinch three times. I'm not getting on right now. Now, if I need to get to that last hole, I might give a little bitty tug just to get that last hole in there, okay? You put that the, the tongue through the hole, or you can do the tie. I prefer this if I can, because otherwise you have a big bulk of, a, of the cowboy tie up here. I can show you how to do that, but, okay? And then, when you set, you got to set this tongue. You don't want it sitting out. I'll grab this outside piece, okay? And then most of the time I'll grab the back piece too. I pull out and down, and up and behind. And that just pushes that tongue right up, and it sets it. It's not going anywhere, okay? You'll see people, they'll be like yanking on this thing all over the place, but it's, it's really not that hard to do, okay? This little piece, if there's enough left over, goes in the keeper. And that's how you put the saddle on, when you want to take it off, okay? And again, if right before you get on, before I do that, you can always put your hand up here. You want to make sure that underneath this part of the saddle, I see this so often, and this saddle is made by Dan High, high quality saddles. He does an awesome job on, this fits all sorts of, of horses, but right underneath here on a lot of the, the machine made or generic made saddles, that part right there digs in right behind that shoulder. You want to make darn sure that that is not pushing in there and inhibiting the shoulder from moving. So I'll put my hand up in there. If I don't have clearance, I need a different saddle or I need to do something different. I should be able to even back my horse or walk my horse and that shoulder blade there should pass underneath the saddle without any problem. You also want to get up underneath this part, underneath all the way under, okay? Make sure that this part of the saddle, let me pull up. <clears throat> you 
you want to make sure that the, the tree of the saddle is actually sitting on the, the muscle sides of the horse. The center should not be laying on top of the horse, okay? It's the tree part right about here that sits right on, on the back muscles, and that's what kind of supports it. If, there's, if you put your hand up here and there's a big gap, then your, your saddle is pushing here and here, and you're going to have a sore horse. It needs to be supported here, not here and here. So your hand should slide underneath here, your hand should slide underneath here, and not there. So often you'll see it slide there and not here and here, then you're going to have an upset horse. Okay? You really want to be careful of that. All right? Yes, I know you're bored. <laughs> okay? Again, make sure everything's okay. Then you can go off riding. Square up here again a little bit. When I want to take everything off, it's reverse. The, the front cinch is the first thing on and the last thing off. I see people undoing the front cinch while the back cinch and or the breast collar is still on. You're going to have a dead horse if something happens. That saddle can slide. All sorts of things can happen. All they got to do is shake, get off a fly. That saddle twists, panicked horse. Not a good thing. So, I usually do the breast collar first. Now with this buckle that I have here, I put my hand behind that buckle so I don't pinch my horse. Some have snaps underneath. This one has a buckle in front. I just put it underneath, lift it up, <laughs> and slide it out. I undo this. Unsnap it. Reach around. Flip it over top. Resnap it. The sweat part is up off of your saddle seat. If it's really sweaty, you can wipe it off after you get it off. Taking off the back cinch. Same thing. Lift up. Don't be rude to your horse. Don't be like yanking on him trying to get this stuff done. Front cinch. Same thing. You'll see people, you know, pulling on this thing to try and get it done. Sorry. I'll grab a hold of the back. And I'll grab a hold of the front. I pull down behind and up in front. Opposite of what I did to put it on. And that tongue comes right on out. Okay. I'll put my hand behind this first one. Grab a hold behind on the last one. Lift up behind and down in front. Okay, sometimes these get kind of sticky from sweat or whatever. You can put a little baby powder on this. Don't put it all over your saddle. But if you need to get a little smooth on that, I usually don't. But again, up behind, down in front. This does not touch the ground. As this comes out, this comes back behind itself. Okay? This part behind tucks back up in through there. Pull this forward. Make your little bunny ears. Okay? Get it all nice and neat. This part, I usually flip it around. Pull it back behind itself. Tighten it up. Now it's all nice and neat there. It won't go anywhere. You can do whatever tie you want there. I just make it simple. So if I have a young colt, I can be holding on to the colt and I can undo this at the same time. Okay, make sure it's all nice and neat. Now, this is the part where everybody has problems with. See if Ariana can get a good picture of this. Get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, let's see, that way. The back cinch and the front cinch. This is going to work just like your belt buckle. If you think about your belt buckle, okay, when you do a belt, it comes up from behind, through, in, and that way. Okay, comes up from behind, through, and in the hole. This. You put the back cinch over the tongue of the front cinch. And forget about the back cinch. Okay? If you have one of those smart cinch things, you don't have a lot of room, it makes it a little bit harder because it's a little tiny tongue, but you can still do it. Okay? So this is going to look just like this. You're concentrating on the tongue of the main cinch, the front cinch, and this part. The back cinch just sits over top of it. Now, see if Ariana can get a picture of this. You need me to move this way, maybe. You're going to go to the bathroom for me? Thank you. Again, upside down belt. This is that part of your belt. 
This goes through there. The tongue goes into that part and it slides down there. All this sweat is out and away from your horse. Some people twist them and stuff like that. But this way, everything that's sweaty is away off of your saddle, off of the good leather. This is replaceable, this is replaceable, but you don't want to have to replace this stuff. Horse sweat isn't the best thing that you want to get all over your saddle. Okay? This, again, you don't have to do this. I just do this because when I set my saddle down. Take this and tie it. Nice and simple. And that just keeps everything in place. That's in place, that's in place. Everything is good. This way, if I wanted to take this up and off, okay, and if I had to, I could set it down on its horn and all that stuff won't fall down so that when I'm ready to, I can just grab it and pick it up again. If I don't have this tied, everything falls forward and I'm searching for stuff. And here I am, ready to put it on the next horse, okay? So what I do now, put it on the stand. Oh, and I'll tell you one other thing too that I see people do <clears throat> quite often. Well, first of all, when I put my saddle pads away, I turn them upside down and I put them over top of the saddle this way. Not on top of the saddle that way, but this way. So the sweat again is out. When you have the Dixie Midnight Pad, you shouldn't have any sweat on your main pad. But the one thing you want to pay attention to when you put whatever pad on you're putting closest to your horse, make sure your pad is clean and free from debris and everything else as well. I've seen people put the saddle pad, lots of times actually, put it on and they have pieces of hay or dirt because they threw this thing down on the ground and now has rocks and then they put it up on the horse and they wonder why the horse is dancing around. You walk around with pebbles in your shoe with somebody standing on you. So make sure that that is free and clear. Okay. And that is basically it. You want to have everything systematic. So I can show you here when you're where I was putting my hand is right here in this pocket right here. When I put my hand underneath there and the saddle's over top, I want to make sure that where this shoulder moves that the saddle has clearance. The saddle should sit up here so that shoulder can slide. If the saddle sits deep into here, then every time the shoulder moves, because they move, every time the horse moves, that shoulder goes back and forth. Okay? See, so every time that shoulder moves, if that saddle is sitting deep in there, you're not gonna have a happy horse. And you're gonna wonder why your horse is all hollow and stuff like that. And again, your saddle's tree, which you don't see because it's covered in leather, but the part that sits on this on the horse, this part goes on this part right here. Should not push down on the spine, okay? Should not be down here. Should not be pushing here. It should not be pushing here. This is where it balances. This has leeway. If you look at this saddle, You look at the saddle in the front here it flares out really good so this part here is what sits on your on the muscles of your horse this part flares out and then Dan also puts a really nice flare on the back here so a lot of times people say well the back of the saddle is not on the horse but he purposely lifts this part of the saddle up so it's not rubbing the horse back here but this part is on the horse this isn't and that isn't, that's a nice flare. You'll see a lot of the, the saddles, they have like a big hump right here. And that is what digs into here and hurts your horse. Every horse is built different, but you know, a good quality saddle always helps. Some horses can just fit a good saddle no matter what you do. So anyway, hope that helps a little bit, answers any questions if anybody has any 
anything else that they request that they want to see or have answered just let me know and that should be just about as much detail as you need about saddling <laughs> thank you very much and talk to you next time